Title simply means to own property. And there are a number of ways that we can own real estate. It can either be voluntary or it can be involuntary. And what we say is this, a voluntary alienation. An alien is somebody from outside coming in. The two voluntary ways that we have is going to be through a deed or a will. The most common that we deal with today is going to be a deed. A will, on the other hand, is where we have already uh, done a document saying that when we pass, that we want our real and personal property to go to somebody else. Anytime that a person dies testate, that means that they die with a will. Anytime that a person dies intestate, that means they die without a will. And that's when we get into the involuntary alienation. When you die without a will, um, your property is going to transfer to somebody else through something called descent and distribution. It's going to go to your nearest heirs or your nearest relatives. Property may also go to the state of Florida. If a person dies without a will and without any heirs whatsoever, it will escheat to the state of Florida. As far as eminent domain is concerned, once again, this is involuntary. Eminent domain is when the state of Florida has the right to come in and take property from an individual. Uh, the state has that right through the United States Constitution. And basically what is happening is, is that once the state makes the decision they want it, uh, they're going to negotiate. Uh, if a person chooses not to negotiate with the state, they will take it through a process known as condemnation. That is to say, they're simply going to condemn the property and then a judge will have to decide how much the property is going to be worth uh, in that take. As far as adverse possession is concerned, I think this concept is a little misunderstood. This is where somebody outside comes in and takes possession of a property for at least seven years or more. The true test of adverse possession is who's paying the property taxes. As long as a true property owner pays property taxes, there can't be a, a, an adverse possession issue. Also, real estate taxes is in kind of an involuntary situation. Uh, it's a lien on the property and it can't be sold until those real estate taxes are paid. As far as notice to title, there are two ways that we have notice to title. First of all, actual notice. And let me say this, actual notice is oftentimes considered to be a physical notice. Uh, probably the most common actual notice that, that we have today is at a closing table where the seller signs the deed, hands it over to the buyer. That's the grantor giving it to the grantee. Uh, at that moment, title transfer. So that's that actual notice concept that we have. But for protection from a legal standpoint, what we want to have is something called constructive notice. Constructive notice is when we take that deed after the closing down to the courthouse and we, we record it on public record. And that way now we are we're, we're protecting our interest in it by giving everybody legal notice that we have ownership. Regarding protecting title, in today's world that we deal with today, what we have is title searches. And what we want to do before we buy real estate is that we want to look back at the history of a property to make sure that there's nothing on the title that the new owner is going to inherit. Anything that's bad like old liens or old judgments or whatever they might be. Uh, today root title is 30 years. In other words, the Marketable Records Title Act says that we only have to do title searches back for 30 years to typically cure title. Used to be we did abstracts. Now, what an abstract is, is a complete history of a property. I mean, it's everything going all the way back to King Ferdinand. As part of that abstract is a chain of title. The chain of title is simply ownership. So the chain of title is a part of that abstract. One of the ways that we protect ourselves today when we have title work done is that we take out insurance. There's an insurance for everything. First of all, the owner can get an owner's policy. And let me say about this owner's title insurance policy. It's non-transferable. What a lender is going to want if the property's been financed, the lender's going to want a lender's policy. And what this lender's policy is going to cover is uh, the amount of money that the lender has actually made or, or lent to, to buy the property. So the lender wants to be covered with, with, with whatever they put into the property. Uh, the lender's policy is transferable, and I'll tell you why. The lender's policy is transferable because most of your mortgages and notes are sold to investors or, or Fannie Mae or whoever it might be out there, some third party investor that buys these. And so therefore the title insurance policy will travel with the mortgage and note. So it is transferable. Regarding deeds, 
uh, there's some important issues about deeds. One, uh, there's a concept that I want you to remember throughout this, this entire class. ORs are always givers of something. EEs are always receivers of something. So when we're talking about a deed, the grantor is the giver of the deed. The grantee is the receiver of the deed. Now, in terms of the deed, it's got to contain uh, the names of the grantor and the grantee. Uh, it's got to con uh, recite some type of consideration. Typically, what we put in there is for $10 and other good and valuable considerations. That's pretty typical. Uh, there has to be a granting clause in there. That's what conveys. There's also going to be in there, uh, typically speaking, uh, a statement of the type of uh, interest that you have. We call that the habendum clause. It's the having to hold clause. In other words, that's where we're going to find the... Uh, the fee simple estate or the life estate if it's a life estate. There's also going to be a redendum clause. That is a reserving clause. That's where we're reserving certain things like uh, deed restrictions or what have you. Uh, and it also may mention the word appurtenance is going to be important because appurtenance is not just the house that we're selling, but it's all the other things that come along with that sale. It also has a complete and uh, a legal description that goes with it. It's got to have a, a complete and entire legal description. And let me make one more, let me say this one more time. Title transfers when the deed is delivered and accepted, when it's, when it's delivered and voluntarily accepted. A deed does not have to be recorded on public record for title to transfer. We, we record our deed on public record to protect our interest because if we, don't re if we don't give legal notice and we lose our deed, we could have a problem. The word that we use is called a stopped. We could be a stopped of ownership if we don't do the right thing and record our deed. As far as the different types of deeds are concerned, uh, one of the deeds that we have is called a quit claim deed. Now, now let me explain a quit claim deed. A quit claim deed is a deed where it says that I may or may not have an interest in the real estate that we're talking about, but I'm going to give you everything that I have, but you can't come back and sue me later if I don't have it. Also, if there's a problem with the property later on, I'm not warranting it either. So, what you see is what you get. I'll tell you where we use a lot of quit claim deeds to cure defects in title from the past. But more than that, I think probably divorces. A lot of your divorce situations where one spouse has to give up the house, they use a quit claim deed that says, here it is, it's yours now, I'm out of the picture, don't come back and see me again. The special warranty deed is a deed where Whoever's issuing it says, I'm going to only warrant it for the period of time that I have owned it. A lot of your banks, when they take a property back in foreclosure and then resell it, they're going to give a special warranty deed. In other words, they're saying, look, I don't know what happened to the title before we bought it, before we took title to it. It's not our responsibility. All we're going to do right now is warrant it for as long as we've owned it. And what, you, what you do with it after that is your business. That means that a person who buys it with a special warranty deed they have the ability to be able to transfer title any way they want to. It doesn't have to be in a special warranty deed. If you think about it, if I bought a property from somebody else and they gave me a special warranty deed and then I wanted to give a special warranty deed, it would only be for the time period that I've owned it, having nothing to do with that time period that the bank or whoever else owned it before me. The general warranty deed, though, is the most common. The general warranty deed is where I'm saying that I'm going to warrant title for not only as long as I've owned it, but all the way in the past, as far back as we have to go. And if there are any legal issues with the property, come see me and I'll pay for it. That's what a general warranty does. It has a warrant of season. And by the way, the warrant of season is a statement of ownership. And let me make a comment about that right now. Of all the deeds that we have, the only deed that does not have the warrant of season is the quit claim deed. The quit claim deed doesn't make a statement of ownership. It just says, I may or may not. Whatever I've got is yours. The general warranty deed, though, has that and a lot of other stuff. It has a warrant against encumbrances, quiet enjoyment, which means that there's nobody else out there that may make a claim on a property, and if there is, I'll take care of it. Uh, and also the warrant of further uh, uh, assurance and forever. So the general warranty deed is a deed that we're all looking for because that gives us the, the, the most warrants and the most guarantees to owning property. As far as ownership limitation and restrictions, there's two kinds. There's uh, government limitations. Uh, and there's also private limitations. As far as the government limitations are concerned, probably the big one is going to be police powers. And let me explain police powers to you. 
These are laws that were created to protect the public from being in harm's way. As far as police powers, probably the bigger ones are like zoning, and that protects a community from the intrusion of undesirable uses. We also have building codes, which are considered to be police powers. So police powers basically protect the public. We've also mentioned eminent domain. Eminent domain is the right that government has to take real property from individuals. And taxation. Some of the big private restrictions, one is a deed restriction. Uh, many years ago, most of our counties throughout the state of Florida were unzoned. Therefore, out in the county areas, in order to protect properties and their interest and to protect them from the intrusion of undesirables, they'd have deed restrictions. And that is to say that a person can restrict a use of a property as long as it's legal. You can say that I, we only want a 2,000 square foot home built here, or it has to be brick, or whatever that restriction is, we can put it in there. Today we call these restrict, uh, restrictive covenants that a lot of builders use. An easement is the right that someone has to come and go a, a, across a person's property. And there are a variety of types of easements. An easement by prescription is one where there's been undisturbed use for over 20 years that may create a permanent easement. Leases are also going to be a restriction to some degree. If you think about it, you still own the property, but somebody else is in it and using it. And there are several kinds of leases. One of the things that I want you to understand and know the difference is between an assignment and a sublease. This is important. Most contracts are assignable unless there's something in them that won't allow them to be assignable. A lease is no different. So what happens is that if you're leasing a property and you decide you don't want to be there anymore, you want somebody to come in and take your place, take everything that you have remaining in that lease, that's called an assignment. A sublease is where you're giving up less than everything that you have remaining in the lease. For instance, if you want to rent out one of your bedrooms or something of that nature, that's called a sublease. As far as liens are concerned, that's another restriction. Remember that a lien is a sign of a debt. And there are several types of liens. There are mortgage liens, which are voluntary. Anytime that you borrow money from a bank, they're going to get you to sign a promissory note. And they're also going to get you to sign a mortgage. Mortgage is a collateral instrument. And they're going to take that and record it on public record to show that that property is being used as collateral for a debt. A judgment lien is issued through a court system. Let me make a comment about the mechanics lien. The mechanics lien is a lien of labor. And what I mean by that is that some work has been done on this property. Uh, the mechanics lien can only be levied against that property where the work was done. It can be levied uh, as much as 90 days uh, after the work was complete and will, re and will date back to when materials were first delivered. So that mechanics lien can be a little dangerous if we're not looking out for it. And that's why sometimes what we want to do is get a release from the seller saying uh, that, that there hasn't been any work done on the uh, property. It's called a lien affidavit. Uh, by the way, uh, 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 a mechanics lien can foreclose a homestead. We talked about homesteads earlier. There's only one lien that cannot foreclose a homestead, and that's a judgment lien. All these other liens can foreclose on a homestead. Real estate tax liens, remember that you have a lien on your real property January 1st of every year, but you don't get your bill until November. April 1st of the following year, it becomes delinquent, and now you're subject to foreclosure and other things. You also have federal income tax liens that can be levied against your property. And let me make a comment about your special assessment liens. This is not condominiums. This is government, the city or county. Anytime that the city or county comes in and does work or repair in your neighborhood, such as repaving your street or putting in sidewalks or putting in lighting, there's going to be a special assessment. And those abutting property owners that are benefiting from this special uh, benefit are going to pay a little bit more than everybody else in the community. Now let's take a look and review that particular uh, chapter. First of all, constructive notice is recording on public record. Licensee should not give opinions of title. And by the way, that's one of the things that the state of Florida uh, is very picky about. Uh, you can always tell somebody what the authorities have said, but you can never give your own opinion of title. The chain of title is part of the abstract, and what it is is ownership. The grantor is the giver, and by the way, the grantor has to be competent. That is, they've got to be at least 18 years or older, and they have to be mentally competent. The grantee, by the way, does not. 
The habendum clause identifies the type of estate. The granting clause has the words of conveyance. Failing to record a deed may cause a person to be stopped or prevented from ownership. The warrant of season uh, is a declaration of ownership and it is not found in the quitclaim deed. Police powers include zoning and building codes. Government limitations include eminent domain. Private limitations include deed restrictions. The assignment of lease gives up everything a person has in a lease. A mechanic's lien is effective when materials were first delivered and can foreclose a homestead. The general warranty deed provides the most protection. A mortgage lien is an example of a voluntary lien. A real estate tax and special assessment liens are considered superior liens. And let me explain that. A superior lien simply means that it's a lien that takes precedence over all other liens regardless of recording dates. Owner's title insurance is non-transferable, whereas the lender's title insurance is transferable. And this is the end of this chapter's review.